to pass. So excited to be here. I am your host, JL Benjamin, and I'm here with my lovely guest, Sierra Fine Apple Coleman. <laughs> and she is a makeup artist out here making it happen and hot in the industry. How you feeling? I feel so great. I'm well. Thank you for asking. That's beautiful. I feel like I have to change my tone. <laughs> I, am, I am so glad as well. So let's, let, let's, let us start from the beginning. Okay. Where are you from? <laughs> so I'm, I was born in Nashville, raised in Indianapolis. This is always a loaded question for me because yeah. I've moved so much. Um, e even in my adult years, like when I turned 18, I moved out the day after graduation. Graduated June 9th. Oh, wow. Moved out the June 10th. You was like, I'm not staying here yeah, another day. I've lived in Philly, <laughs> Jersey, New York, Orlando, Nashville again, yeah. um, until I finally settled on Atlanta and that's where I felt the most at home. Yeah. So how long have you been in Atlanta? Um, I feel like I've been saying six years for a while, so it's probably about seven now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what directed your path into makeup? Did you start out as a makeup artist? No, so I started off as a painter. I've always been an artist. Um, I've always um, saw art in shapes, so everything came easy for me because if you put shapes together, you get a whole picture. Um, so mm -hmm. like me looking at your face right now, I'm not seeing the, the, I'm breaking it down in shapes, basically. Yeah. So if I was to paint you, like I said, I started off as a painter, I would do murals and portraits of people. Wow. And so when I got into makeup, um, it was pretty much, I got into makeup in study hall class, actually. <laughs> there, was, there was a girl who was in study hall class with me and she was so glamorous for high school. And I was so intrigued. And I was like, wait a minute, like I wanna be glam too. <laughs> and when I started getting into makeup, it was just so easy for me because it, it was just, it was another form of art and I was already an artist. Artist. So yeah. um, that's how I got into makeup. So, so did you start out doing like family members makeup or what was like mm -hmm. the first, who was the first face? That you did? The first face that I did, um, high school friends. High school friends, yeah. And then my own face. Um, I was the only child, so yeah. all I had to do was I was more into art even as a child than I was into toys. So um, I was doing my own face and trying to figure out how to, um, you know, slim them, them round cheeks out and all that <laughs> stuff. So um, myself and my friends. And then... Um, I did it more so like as a side thing yeah. um, in college. I worked at like Sephora and some other makeup place. I just I just did makeup jobs like um, oh like cosmetic retail counters at Nordstrom and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's how I really got into okay. Well, I can do makeup as a job, but I never thought it would be my career. Never. Wow. Never. What was that moment where you were like, actually, I want to do this. I want to become an entrepreneur. You know, run my own business around makeup. Um, so, um, well, I got into TV and film. Okay. And that was, for me, I never thought that that was going to be my thing at all. I honestly thought that, okay, I'm going to do makeup for a little bit, and then I'm going to figure out all these. Because I have other talents and other yeah. things that, that I wanted to try out um, and really succeed at, but makeup was the thing that, like, come here, girl. <laughs> Stay right here. Like, that's the thing that reeled me in. So, um, I was working in Nashville um, at the Bobby Brown Cosmetics Counter, and and um, that really helped me refine my artistry because I was more of a glam makeup artist at the time. And then Bobby was, um, that brand was very soft and natural makeup. And there were so many women of different cultures and different, um, different ethnicities and different skin tones and undertones. And I was forced to actually work on them. And if it hadn't been for that counter experience, I wouldn't be as multifaceted with my hand as I am now. So I um, decided to move to Atlanta because yeah. I thought, oh, you're gonna go to Atlanta and you're gonna, you're such a good networker, you're gonna um, be a celebrity makeup artist. That's what I thought was gonna happen, um, and it did happen, but it didn't happen the way that I thought it was. Yeah, um, God laughed at my plans. Um, <laughs> he do that all the time, right? Uh, he, he, Disrespectful. Yeah, he, 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 he a funny one. <laughs> He's a funny one. So um, what I did was I quit my job in Nashville at the counter, um, and I was. It was a really dumb decision to most um, because there was security of having like you know um, what is it insurance and all the benefits and all that stuff mm. um, there was security in that but I've never been a person that wanted to stick in that comfort zone mm. I always um, step out on faith I really do so I decided to move to Atlanta because I always visited Atlanta and like I said I felt the most at home here yeah. this place is just really I just feel comfort when I come to Atlanta so I always knew I wanted to move here and when I did I applied for MAC Cosmetics I, <laughs> they offered me significantly less than what I was making 
and um, with significantly less hours. I was only going to be part-time, 20 hours a week, $16 an hour, and I had nowhere to live. Um, all I had was my car with a big dent inside of it and $2,000 to my name. So I came here to Atlanta, and um, I slept on a friend's couch. I told I got hired by Mac, but when I got here, they said it took like four weeks in order for me to um, get my paperwork processed. So that was four weeks I could have stayed in my other job and collected four Some more weeks money. of checks. Exactly. Right, right. <laughs> so now I'm here, and I'm, I'm running through this little $2,000 that I got, and yeah. I'm on this friend's couch, and I had another friend who was an actress. Um, she was on the show Being Mary Jane and uh, Raven Goodwin. I owe her my entire career. I will always, always credit her for this. Um, she was an actress on there. I think they were in like season two, maybe three at the time. And we have our favorite restaurant here is Busy Bees. Oh, I, I, went I to love the, Busy Bees. So good, the mac and cheese. But you got to order two hours in advance. You do, you do, you do, you do, you do. Because it's because it's that good and the line out the door. It is. But I was at Busy Bees one day and I thought about my friend because we always love to be fat together and eat. So I texted her and I was like, girl, guess where I'm at? I'm at Busy Bees. And she said, oh, we're filming right down the street from there. Get my usual and come to the set. Here's the address. I'm going to give your name to security and they'll let you in. You can come have lunch with me on my trailer. I got one scene. After that scene, we'll go get drinks, right? Yeah. You can wait on my trailer while I do that. So that was the plan. I went to her trailer. Trailer. Um, we had our food, had our busy bees. She turned on the movie for me, stayed on her trailer for two seconds before, when she left, for two seconds, a PA came and was like, hey, um, they want you on the makeup trailer. And I was like, oh, okay, so I get to go and watch her get her makeup done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I just happened to be beat that day. So it was a good day for me. I was, it was a good looking day. I went on the um, the trailer and her her makeup artist, who was the department head for being Mary Jane, her na name is Lilette Little John. Forever grateful to her because she did not know me from a can of paint. But she was like, um, she said, what do you want to do? Like, I heard you were a makeup artist. What do you want to do? I had never thought about TV and film. Never. But for some reason, those words left my mouth. I want to do makeup for TV and film. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about it because it's such a secret world. Like, yeah. when I watch movies, obviously, well, before, now I watch movies in a whole different way because I work on them. But when I watched them before, I never thought about, oh, somebody has to be getting them ready. Somebody has to be doing their makeup. Yeah. I never knew that it was such a lucrative career. Gotcha. So um, she was like, well, you know, um, I'll take your number and maybe you can come play with us um, one day, right? And me thinking, play I'm thinking play and makeup yeah. <laughs> but play there's a term called day playing okay. um, in the industry that um, you have your your set core um, makeup and hair people in TV and film the department head and the key and maybe a third makeup artist and then you have your day players who are additional people who they call uh, when they have like more background actors and yeah. they need people to cover those people so that's what she meant but in my mind I'm, I'm very green so I'm thinking oh I'm just coming to play and makeup and I will definitely play with her because she's the department my head for being Mary Jane. So right. That's cool. So um, after that, the very next day was Mother's Day weekend of 2015, and I was meeting my mother in Nashville. I was in Atlanta. She was in Indianapolis. We were going to meet in Nashville. That's like the middle point, um, and spend Mother's Day weekend together. As soon as I got on the highway, that lady called me, and she said, I have an emergency. I have an artist who can't be here. Can you be here in an hour? And I was like, yeah, I sure can. Had no kit packed. I had on sweats. <laughs> I had nothing. So um, I went to, I, I called my mom and I was like, I can't come, girl. You got to understand. I just can't, I can't come. I got to go play and make up on being Mary Jane. Sacrifice so, number one. Yes. So that was, that was the first thing. And I went, and mind you, I was already like really broke because I bet $2,000 was just doo, yep. going away from me. So um, I went to CVS to get like some, just some disposable essentials, like some Q-tips and disposable uh, mascara wands, things okay. that you would need in a, in a kit as a developing makeup artist. So got to the counter, that lady swiped my card, declined. Stop it. Declined. But I had told her, I was telling her, and she was ringing the stuff up, I was telling her how excited I was. I was like, I'm going to go do makeup at Behind Jane and blah, blah, blah. And I was just so excited. And when the, decline, the, the car declined, I looked and I was like, okay, what can I put back? What can I, what can I afford to not have in my kit? Because I didn't want to go and have to ask her for anything that I needed. I yeah. wanted to seem very prepared. And the lady was ringing me up. I was like, you're not putting nothing back. She pulled out her card, the cashier, and she paid for all of my stuff. Oh my yeah, goodness. She paid for all my stuff. I wish I could find that lady. I really wish I could because I'm so, I'm a girl thinking about her. Uh, but yeah, so um, I went and I still at that point thought I was doing makeup for free. Like I thought it was, I was just so happy to be there. 
Yeah. And, oh my God, I cannot be on crying thinking about that lady. <laughs> <laughs> you really, got me crying. Oh my gosh, I really am crying about her <laughs> because she that was the start for me, you know. Yeah. Um, and because of her generosity, um, that um, that led me to my career path, like what I'm doing now. That really, it really was the foundation of honestly of how I was going to behave and how I was going to treat other people in this industry because there are a lot of ugly people in here. So yeah, she she really that I mean I already am a genuinely kind person, but that really let me that lady did not know me. So that really yeah. set the tone for how I was going to treat people who still mistreated me in this industry. So um I went and they gave me this big pile of paperwork and I'm thinking, oh I just gotta sign an NDA because you know, <laughs> now I know the storyline and everything. Still not thinking, still so naive, not thinking that I was getting paid to be there. And then when I got to the page and I start seeing like what like little the, the W of uh, two W2s. fours. I'm like, oh, they paying me to be here? Okay. So, so that's when I realized I was getting paid. And the next page was the rate and everything. And I had never made that much um, mm. hourly. Um, so I was just really, I was, I was taken aback. <laughs> like that was, that was a lot for me. Um, and the first person I ever touched on set was um, Miss Margaret Suge Avery from Color Purple. Oh and my I, goodness! Yes, and that was that was a big deal for me, a big deal because you know you grow up watching the color purple, oh, and no. yeah, and like she, that? yes, and the my department head at the time she was like, okay, here's here's Miss Avery's bag, um, her real last name is Avery. Um, Here's Miss Avery's bag. She's gonna ask you for lipstick, but she's supposed to be sick in the thing, so don't give her the lipstick. Just pretend like you're doing. I said, you want me to tell Miss Avery now? <laughs> Not doing that. <laughs> she got <laughs> but you her lipstick, but don't give right, it. Don't give it to her. Don't give it to her. But yeah, so that's how I started off in the industry. That yeah. was my that was my very first show, and I never worked for Mac. Now one day, um, I ended up with now. That's this is talk about step out on faith because <laughs> that was they had like seven weeks left of that show when I came on, and so if I. If you if if I was thinking logically yeah. and about you know my finances and everything, then the smarter decision would have been to, okay, girl, go to your job. But yeah. I had to tell them that I wasn't going to work there because at that moment I was like, this is this is what I want to do. I want to stay in this, and so I have to now build a name for myself wow. and really you know try to find other jobs after this is over. This little seven weeks of filming. Wow. I mean, blessings will just hit you out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. You were you're about to take a flight to go out of town. You don't mm -hmm. have your makeup kit with you. And I no. know one of my friends does makeup. That y'all kit, y'all like y'all brushes to be y'all brushes. It's a thing. Y'all whole situation. Yeah. Cause you you need space to set your stuff mm -hmm. up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you went to CVS. CVS to get the cheapest things I could find, and I still couldn't afford them. Still went to CVS and them. got yeah. those things and literally but use that. I'm assuming you used that makeup mm -hmm. on your first client. So what, what ended up happening was, see, I, I was more prepared than what I needed to be. Okay. But thankfully, I was. I always be prepared. If you, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Yeah. Um, but what happened was, um, I, when I got there, she knew that she called me just all of a sudden. And she didn't know me. So when she saw me, she said, OK, go to that station over there and do your makeup. And she made me do my own makeup. So I did, I did that. And she was like, Okay, you look great. And then here's Miss Avery's bag, and that's and she just threw me out there. Yeah. But um, I thank her so much because she's also one of the few department heads that I've met in this industry that literally took me under her wing. Like we would just any moment that we had to sit on set and actually converse, she was teaching me something. Yeah. She was diving into who I was and what I wanted to do and how I could navigate to get there. And um, I remember um, at that time, Gabrielle Union's makeup artist was Malika James, who is a dear big sister to me now but um Lilette had me watch her she said pay attention to her she's like one day you're gonna be a Malika James she's like that's that's what I see you're gonna be like her and and I I latched on to that information I was like Malika Malika do gab <laughs> <laughs> I always thought of her you know just, I just I put Malika on a pedestal and I still do to this day yeah. and she still teaches me lessons after lessons today and helps me like just navigate through the industry and tells me how to handle certain situations with different department heads because because it's, it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Is that one of the unwritten rules to have your makeup like done when you go to set to do makeup? Oh, no, not at all, okay. really. Um, I was actually surprised by how many makeup artists 
don't have their like face done when we go to work. Okay. And in the beginning, because like I said, I was very green. So I was coming with makeup done every day, typically, right? Beat to the guy. After, beat. <laughs> okay. And then after a while, I was like, I'm not doing this. We have 4 a.m. call times. <laughs> like, I'm not doing that. I'm here for 15 hours in a day. Yeah. I'm not coming to wear makeup. I'm coming to do a job. Yeah. So, and that's, and once I learned that it was about the job and not about, this part of me, um, mm -hmm. things things went a different direction. How do you yeah. continue your craft? Because once you're on set doing a, doing makeup, like mm -hmm. how do you hone in on your craft and your skill um, outside of set? Outside of set? Yeah. Or is it outside of set? Is it always you on the job time training? Outside of set. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you don't have time. <laughs> so uh, I mean, just this week alone, I worked 72 hours. So yes, yes, but it, it's. What kind of shoes you got? On? Look, look, your feet got to be comfort. Well, well, I twisted my ankle on, <laughs> recently at work. Oh, Lord. And I okay? still stayed. I'm okay, but I still stayed. And I, I sat down and I did my touch-ups. My actors, my actors on the show that I'm on now, they love me so much and I really value that. But they literally came over and sat down next to me for me to do their touch-ups, which yeah. is, that's a no, typically. Yeah. Like, he's, we, we go to them. I'm, it's a service industry. I'm, I'm serving them. Mm -hmm. But I've served them so well and so much that they were like, no, let us come to you. You, you the one is injured. So yeah. yeah, it's really sweet of them. Have you ever done someone's face or someone's makeup mm -hmm. um, and it not been right? And like, I know how sometimes like, but mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, that now that right. you're like celebrity makeup artist, mm -hmm. so it's like, <laughs> have you ever like been like, oh, I need to redo that or, or go back. The colors aren't matching the way I thought mm -hmm. or whatnot. Yes. So not even the colors. It's more so... Um, well, I told you, when I worked with Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown Cosmetics, I had women of all different age groups. Yeah. And so, um, in different colors. So, I learned how to do um, Indian women. I learned how to do um, Caucasian women. Just yeah. all of that. It, it wasn't just black women, that I, which was what I was accustomed to doing. Yeah. So, um, when I got thrown into doing other people, um, it was... It was very easy. I'm not gonna lie because okay. I, I already had that counter experience. Really did help me. The problem that I had was when I got to male grooming, mm. and which yes, okay. and which now is so crazy because that's my specialty. Like that's it. Male grooming is very hard because you have to. You're doing something on a man that is typically deemed to just be on women, which is makeup, and you have to make it look like it's not there at all, like it doesn't exist, and that is the hardest thing to master <laughs> the hardest to make to add something to layers to somebody's face and make it look like you didn't do shit oh i'm not oh, no you're fine <laughs> <laughs> sorry kids no you're fine <laughs> just wait a minute to add okay, something to, to add someone's... something to someone's face um layers of something and make it look like you didn't do anything like there's nothing there like it make it look like skin breathable skin um so the first person you want me to say a name or who i messed up on if you can I feel like I messed up. I don't think I feel like everybody else is okay. But um, the first the first two men that I did was on a show um, called Born Again Version, and it was starring Tank and Jackie Long. Those were the first two males that I did. I was hired to do them. Yeah. Um, and I did great on Jackie, but I I beat Tank's face. <laughs> I gave him a beat. <laughs> Not gonna lie, and it was so, it was so crazy because so I did a before and after, um, like you know how you can do um, the picture collages. Yep. So I did a before and after, um, and I posted it on my Instagram, and it went viral in all the wrong ways. Oh. It was so awful. It was the most embarrassing moment of my career. Oh my god. Yeah, it was terrible. How it was on bossup.com. It was everywhere. Yeah, and they was basically, and they weren't really talking about me. They were talking about him. Yeah. And it made me feel so terrible because I had his permission to do the photo um because in like uh, people if you're not in the industry you don't realize that men every man on set wears makeup every single last one of them um and you you just think that you know they just go on camera looking perfect no everybody gets makeup it's a thing it's not yeah. it's we have to take away the um the negative connotations that we have with men wearing makeup because we have it's a lot. TV and film. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you gotta. I mean, it's TV, and I, I even um, I had a conversation before with a uh, big boy of Outcast before he said that when he first started doing because obviously he's a rapper, but when he first started acting, um, he didn't. He was like one of those was like you're not putting no makeup on me, and I get it. I get it because you're a rapper, like, yeah. and you're a man, and you you know you're not used to that. But he said the first time that he saw he was he saw himself on camera. 
camera next to other men and how like they looked like, you know, flawless. And he looked at his his skin on there. He was like, oh, no, no. put that back on. <laughs> give, give me the back on. <laughs> now he has particular things that he likes to like he he likes for you to make sure you do um, because the, yeah. the, it's TV. We, the point is to make people look their best. Yeah. You know, it, unless it's something that calls for them to look their worst. Like if, if they're sick in a hospital, that scene will cause for me to make sure that their lips are chapped looking. And, you know, what 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 do you look like when you're sick? You have bags under your eyes, those type of things. So it's not just glam makeup. It's also mm -hmm. special effects. If, if you got um, if my character gets into a fight, I have to be able to um, blood. Black, yeah, mm -hmm. blood, black their eye, things of that nature. So it's so many different elements to makeup and TV and film. Where do you go to get those kind of skill sets to make like um, the blood and the gore? And, and where stuff? do you go to get the skills or the product? The skill. The skill. Um, you go to practice. You, you, you go you go right here and you, you practice with self. Um, but there are also like different. Um, I would here's here's what I would do. If I were to, if I wanted to aspire to do this, and yeah. this was, let's say I didn't know anything about this world, um, I would go to imdb.com okay. and I would look up some of my favorite movies. Um, if it's, let's say, if it's a horror film or something, if you want to get into special effects makeup, I would look up that movie and I would go to the makeup department and I would look at who was the department head in that um, or who the makeup artists were in that. And then I would look them up, find their Instagrams. Yep. And a lot of the times, most of the times, those artists, um, the ones who are super seasoned vets, they are doing classes um, once or twice a month at different um, uh, theatrical makeup stores that we have here in Atlanta. Um, like, um, I know the engineer guy does classes all the time. You have your bald cap classes that teaches you how to put on, like make someone with hair look like they're bald. You put on the bald cap. Um, but there's there's more than just putting on the cap. You got to do some makeup and stuff around to blend those edges. Gotcha. Um, there's different, you know, different special effects classes. So that's, that's where I would start. And okay. that's how I... I started knowing who people was in this industry, like who I wanted to model my careers after. I would just get on IMDb and look at my favorite movies and see who did the makeup for them. Yeah. Yeah. And so you talked about different, almost like, I don't want to say departments, but mm -hmm. skill sets, right? There's mm -hmm. special effects makeup. Mm -hmm. There's soft glam. Mm -hmm. There's male grooming. Male grooming. Yep. There's even tattoo work. I've had shows where um, we have one actor who's playing a rapper and he looks nothing like a rapper. So then it's up to the makeup, the hair, and the costume department to all collaborate oh, cohesively wow. and make him look like he's a rapper. So for, for me, I'm in the makeup department. Um, I was like, okay, well, he has to have tattoos. He's most rappers have tattoos now, right? So as an artist, I started off as a painter. I, I yeah. could draw. I drew out tattoo designs for him. We had them sent off to a place that actually like makes um, transfer prints, and okay. we got a bunch of them printed off because um, we also have to think about continuity. So if he if his character plays today, and then we we film a scene two weeks from now, and he comes back, we have to have those same tattoos. Same tattoos. But, same yes. Same exactly, yes. We have to continue with the continuity. So, Ooh. yep. What was one of the harder techniques, like hopping into, like going to t TV and film, mm -hmm. makeup? What was one of those techniques that surprised you? I was like, oh, this actually might take me a little time hmm. to, to grasp. Oh, laying beards. <laughs> laying beards, because that's that's another thing. Perfect example. Last week, we had um, we had an actor who, sometimes when you have um, certain actors who are series regulars, mm -hmm. they're, they're typically not allowed to be doing something else at the exact same time. Well, they don't have the time to because they're, they're regular on this show. So you don't have to worry about their look changing um, um, a lot. You don't have to worry about them going and getting their nails painted a different color somewhere when they know they have to have the same color nails that they did last week for the new scene. Yep. Um, so um, that's not a problem. This actor in particular, he was he was a day player. Um, remember that term that I didn't know in the beginning? Day player. Yep. So he was a day player, <laughs> and um, his so he was allowed to go do other things when he's not filming. Gotcha. And he went to another show and he had to shave his face. Let's, I don't know what he played, but let's say he played a police officer because most police officer roles have to you have to shave them down completely. So he had to shave down completely for another role. Then the next week he came back to our show where he had a beard the week before. So we had to let like individual hairs down all over his face to make it look like the beard he had the week before once he shaved yeah that, that individual that is not hairs? easy yes <laughs> yes now sometimes they, we do have like lace pieces yeah but um I mean there have been plenty of memes going around that 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 doesn't always look right so you have to really um like the individual ones to me are the most realistic 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. People think when I when I tell people what I do for a living, they really I, I truly believe that they think that I just make people glamorous and beautiful all day. And that yeah. is far from the truth. You it's far in from my the mind, truth. I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, makeup artists, I've been watching them, you mm-hmm. know, they just put the makeup on. Mm-mm. You know, you no, know, it's far from on. the truth. I, I did um recently I did before the show that I'm on now, I did um I day played on the BMF um, series. Yeah. Um, and that takes place in the 80s. So that's a period piece. So not only am I having to do makeup, but I have to do makeup for the 80s. It it's cannot, like you, yeah, you cannot look like 2021 in this because what, one thing about background, because I was working in background, is yeah. background actors make or break a scene. They really set the tone for the period that you're in, the, um, the geographically where you're at. Yeah. Um, it can, Does it look like, do they look like LA girls or do they look like Atlanta girls? Like, the, it's really important. So we couldn't have background actors in there with nails that look like these because this was job in the 80s. <laughs> you can't really do Yes, yeah, thank you. But they couldn't be in there like that. And then um, because of the storyline, we had a lot of... Um, actors or background actors too that were um, drug users we had to make them look like that so I'm not just making people look beautiful I had to make them look worn out tired and drugged out and that's a whole different type of makeup that means I had to even go as far because makeup is also responsible for nails so I had to take like um, uh, fake dirt and put dirt under their nails um, and make just make just make it look really grungy and very very street and yeah, so but th- th- those times are fun. Don't get <laughs> fun because I'm so used to doing beauty, you yeah. know. So when I get a chance to do something fun like that, um, I, I soak it up. I mean, but it's not like I you have to know time periods. You, you know, do. like you have to really look up. There's the more. script, the scene, mm-hmm. the scene. You have yeah. to be familiar with what these people look like. You have to do your research for it. You have to. You have to. Um, yeah. When you get hired for a job, you have to really research what the job entails and what that job needs from you. What is, yeah. what is it that you can contribute to this job and um, how well can you do it? And be honest with yourself in that. And if there's something that you can't do, then you got to make sure that you communicate that or learn it. Because a lot of things in this industry, or just in general, you don't know until you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is experience based. Um, I wouldn't know. I never took a class to learn how to lay beards. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't know how to do it until I had to do it. You know, so those those type of things, yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. So on a normal day, mm-hmm. how many I don't know if y'all say faces, but mm-hmm. like how many faces could a, a makeup artist potentially touch while on set? Um, that is that varies really. Okay. Because so um Currently on the show that I'm on now, um, yeah. if we're talking about the main principal cast, yep. there are six main principal casts. Okay. Out of those six, I do three. Okay. So um, that's a lot when they're all filming at the same time. Yep. Um, especially if we have day players at the same time, like other actors who aren't the principals. Um, I could have like five bags, five actors bags on my shoulders and touching up all those people. But that's why we hire day players. There's that word again. Yep. Um, and they can come and take a little, like we might do the main um, makeup artists might do the makeup on the trailer. But once we get on set, um, we have trusted other day players that we can hand that actor's bag to and, and have them take care of them while we're on set to just you know spread the love out and not spread myself too thin so So it varies so we talked about you know where your background is and where you're from and how Mm -hmm. you started and hopped in the industry Mm -hmm. what is sierra doing today like like what what's new Mm -hmm. today i know you mentioned the the set you're currently working Mm -hmm. on and those artists but Mm -hmm. are you doing any kind of products or have any products coming out or i don't know I want to say makeup companies, but it's not like you don't have time to like do people faces outside of that. So <laughs> it's so it's so tough to juggle, um, to have a work life balance in general in yeah. this industry. If you're gonna do this, you have to. It's not for everybody. You have to really be dedicated to it yeah. because there are um, a lot of women in this industry that I would love to model my career after, but. Um, I look at those women's personal lives and it's not a personal life I want to model mine after Mm. Um, because it's, you know, they've, you know, they've never had children and maybe that was an aspiration to them. Maybe this is what they wanted to do, but I want both. Yeah, (laughs) I want both. So um, my my goal is to find that balance and get myself to a point where um, 
I'm not taking every job that is offered to me. I'm able to say no to this one because, you know, I want to do family things this month. Yeah. And then next month I might say yes to a job. Um, so it's just finding that balance. And um, I have so many other things that I want to do that it's so hard to do those things I cook. And I want to relaunch my, my YouTube channel and do my cooking videos. Oh, yeah, and, we need the food. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, I really I really want to do that. But uh, my next project is a six-month-long um, show. Yeah. And I have to go out of town for that one for six months. So after that's over, I plan on taking that time that I need and knocking out um, a lot of videos. So that way, when I do go back to my next show after that, I just have them in the chamber ready to, you know, upload. All I got to hit is upload. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, like, yeah. So what's one piece of advice, if you had to mm -hmm. look at the camera and talk directly to the student, mm -hmm. that you would give to the next student who's like, mm -hmm. I want to be a celebrity makeup artist? Like, okay. like, how do I do it? Like, they're just nervous. Like, what are a few statements that you would like? I have a couple of pieces of advice that I can give. Oh, we need all that. Okay, sure. so you want camera? Yeah, you can okay. direct it to them. So um, one thing that I would say is always do the job that you're hired for, not the job that you want. Because if you continue to do the job that you're hired for and you do that um, beyond anyone's expectation, you'll eventually get the job that you want. Um, and you'll, you're always going to be where you're supposed to be. Don't oversell yourself. Just do the job you were hired for. Um, that's one. The second one I would say is, because this is something that's really personal for me, um, as far as um, your light, always let your light shine and never diminish it for anybody. Um, don't water yourself down. If, you, if you're if you extra vibrant personality and, and you're super talented, don't water that down to make other people comfortable. Be you. Um, if they can't digest who you are, then they're just gonna have to choke. And that's, that's it. Uh -uh. <laughs> she said they're just gonna have to choke. They are. And you Let said it so choke. gracefully. Cause, I, Cause I'm genuine about that. I really do mean that they will have to choke and that's on them. Um, you, can't, you can't water yourself down for somebody else's comfort. And I, I struggle with that so much. Yeah. Um, being somebody who has like a very bubbly personality um, or somebody that people are drawn to. Um, there's there's a lot of people in general in any industry that are going to be threatened by your skill set, threatened by the way others love you, and you can't. I found myself um, feeling like I had to, like you know, shrink a little bit yeah. so that I didn't outshine other people. I can't worry about that because as I have to always ask myself, are you doing the job you were hired for? Yeah. And if you're doing that, then you're doing everything right. Continue to do that, and they can get rid of you. You, I, I. I pride myself on making sure that I am indisposable. Like you can't, you can't get rid of me because you need me. Yeah. I bring something to the table that you can't find anywhere. And as mad as you might be, that it might outshine what you got going on, you still need me. And I'll make sure that I do that job for you because you're going to need me again. <laughs> and you're going to hire me again. Well, you know, I, I do need some makeup, but I can't afford your prices. Lord you don't Jesus. even know my prices. <laughs> Y'all, if you're a student, you know what I'm saying? We need the Sierra Fine Apple Coleman stipend over here. <laughs> so on your YouTube series, mm -hmm. what can they expect? Because you said cooking. Are you also going to be doing like makeup videos or reviews or whatnot? I think that's what people expect from me because mm. that's what, you know, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, um, I do feel like I, I will do things, but it yeah. won't be like a makeup tutorial. It'll be more like tips and tricks, you know, yeah. um, you know, my skincare um, routine and things like that or what I do um, for I have hooded eyes, how I, you know, how I do eyeshadow on a hooded eye because um, I know a lot of other people struggle with that. So it'll be things like very specific makeup Nuances. tips. Yeah, yeah. but the, the channel in general, um, I want it to be more of a lifestyle thing. When I first had my YouTube, that's why I say relaunch. I'm going to relaunch the channel. But when I first had it, it was all makeup and cooking. Okay. So I want to do, you know, my DIYs. I'm, yeah. I'm a creative, so I, I make a lot of my home decor. Um, so things like that. And then the cooking. I'll be cooking food from different cultures and things of that nature. So yeah. it's going to be fun. You're taking all opportunities right now. Is that No. Right? Okay. I just no. turned one down. Okay. Okay. So I did. Boom. So this doesn't make sense. Okay. Boom. So when you are not getting called for a job and to be on set, mm -hmm. and you're like, hey, my phone's on do not disturb. Like, mm -hmm. what are you typically doing with your time? 
Oh, I'm a big self-care taker. Yeah. Yeah. I take care of myself so much. So I grew up an only child, so it's always just me anyway. And, you know, I don't have any children and I'm single. So it's really, it's really all about me. And I think that, um, <laughs> yeah, I think, that, yes, it's, it's about me. <laughs> but um, I think that that's important for anyone at any stage in their life. You always, you can't lose who you are in taking care of yourself. Self-care is so important. So um, you will find me meditating. Okay. You will find me at the spa. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, you will find me getting my nails done, things like that, and reading. Um, yeah. Lots of like, doing crafts, painting, yeah. paintings that no one will ever see. Um, just my own personal things that make me feel good. We can't um, get a past exclusive. Of a painting? Yeah. I mean, I could show you guys, but I have paintings in my Ooh. phone. I like to organize. I, I keep a very, very organized home. Um, yeah, those are things. You want to see your painting? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I have, where that phone at? Yeah, I paint. It's so many um, past exclusives. Show, 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 show to the camera. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Um, well, all the ones in this album I have. Um, Cause that's your first love. So we, yeah, yeah. You know so what I'm saying this I have one alone. here that I did of Amy Winehouse. Um, that's. Oh my goodness. It's a black and white painting. Y'all, it's Amy Winehouse, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have a good Okay. Show that oh camera. Oh my says. goodness, y'all. It's Amy Winehouse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did that one years ago. Um, cool. But thank you so much. Um, and then I have um, the late and great Gerald Levert. I actually painted this one for his daughter as a birthday gift. Oh my goodness. And so are you still selling works? No, um, right, I don't. Like, these are passion projects. Like I just, um, slide that up girl. These are passion projects. Like I said, she's a really good friend of mine. So I painted that for her for her birthday one year. Um, the Amy Winehouse, I did that for a friend as well. Um, I paint murals and things on, um, um, actually, the actress that got me into this industry, Raven Goodwin, I painted her daughter's nursery. Um, oh I did. I have goodness. a picture of that too. It's hold on. I did like wildflowers and everything on her daughter's nursery. Yeah. I want one. <laughs> what a baby? Or no, 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 a nursery? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, girl. I don't know what makes them say that on my face, but I will wipe it off. Okay. No. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoy doing stuff like that. Yeah. So how do you, where do you go to get gigs? Like, or is it all like word of mouth? Really and truly, it's, um, it's not just about who you know, it's about who knows you. Okay. Um, and that's why I say you have to do the job you ride for because that's what people are going to notice that you, yeah. that is, if that what you did. And that's what, um, a lot of the times, Bad news spreads faster than good news. Yeah. So you have to double up the good news. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean oversell yourself. I literally mean just do what you're supposed to do. Because a lot of times if you, um, if even when I, I'm in a position to, you know, bring on day players on the project that I'm currently on now. Uh -oh. and Is that what you said? Bring on day players. Yes. I'm in a position Students. to do that. So, you know, you know. I love giving, um, <laughs> you know, extending opportunities. But um, one thing that I don't want anyone who's coming to work for us to do is to yeah. oversell themselves and tell me everything that they did. Oh, I did this and da, 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 da. I don't need to know that because if you did all those things, which is your job anyway, I'm gonna know. I'll see that you did it. Yeah. And those that that stands out to me the most that you know you're not trying so hard to do that. Um, so it's really about who knows you and who notices you. Um, it, it took me a while to get to a point where people were calling me and I wasn't having to send out text messages and say in emails saying I'm available. But that's that is what we do. When we're yeah. out of work, we you you know, it's protocol to just email the department heads or people who typically department head projects and say, hi, just letting you know I'm available, blah, blah, blah. Here's my resume. Send, you know, and okay. then, you know, eventually if they, most of them will ask, you know, other people about you. Yeah. That's why your reputation is so important. Um, how you uphold yourself um, in, in your workspace is so important because people will ask about you. And when you say your resume, is your resume like a portfolio of faces or is your resume, no, like this is where I've worked and where I've kind of so, people I've worked with. 
it, it's so it's so confusing because there's no blueprint for a makeup artist and okay. hairstylists as far as resumes are concerned, um, especially because there's so many different um, different avenues that a makeup artist could be. Someone could specialize in wedding makeup. Someone could do a lot of um, editorial magazine shoots and things. Gotcha. But I do TV and film. There's literally no blueprint for our resume. So you have to. Well, we do, we literally look at each other's resumes. <laughs> and say, okay, well she she did this this layout on her, so maybe I should <laughs> I should switch this up on mine. So for me right now I have. I do have a PDF file that I have a lot of my work and it shows male grooming in there. It shows some natural uh, makeup. It shows um, a couple of little effects things yeah. and just the, the basics as well. And then um, I will also attach my resume, which it will, it has references. References are the most important, honestly. It really is because okay. really with TV and film, the resume, they can look on IMDb. And, and see what you did, yeah, you know, and that's really that's that's the valid thing right there. It's a valid source um, to find out what you've done, but um, it's really the references. They're gonna call the last producers you worked with. They're gonna call the last department heads you worked with. Um, if they um, see one of their, because these producers they all know each other. If they see one of their people on there that you worked for, they're gonna call and say, yeah. well, what did you think of this person? Well, I got this project coming up. Do you think she'd be good for this? And that's where that reputation comes in. You know, you have to keep, you know, stay in good standing with people um, because it's not it's not just the skills. It's also about um, how you interact with people and how people, you know, take you and how you respond to them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's a lot. I'm so excited, y'all. Like, interviewing a makeup artist is kind of hard, guys, especially when you do your own makeup. You, know, you look beautiful. You're, you're what? Like, oh, <laughs> you look great. But, no, I am so excited that we got you on the show today. I'm happy like, to be here. Your entire story and journey is so unique. I mean, you even shared that you canceled on Mama's Day. Like, Mom, I did. Look, you was like, hey, Mom, I, I love did. you. But when we up, you yeah. You know, you're going to be heavy. Yeah, I had, to, I had to cancel that. But I'm, thank God I did because, yeah. I mean, I'm still I'm still doing it now. I'm still, oh, I never no. stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was so scared because yeah. um, it was a matter of after me and Mary Jane, I didn't know what was going to come next. Once that seven weeks was up, yeah. it was like um, I had to think about, I was thinking about a few things. One, what is my next job going to be if I turn down Mac now? Because it was either now or never for them. Like They were like, you coming to work or what? <laughs> um, and I'm like, no, I'm going to stay for the last few weeks on Be Mary Jane. Yeah. But um, I had to think about that. And then I had to think about um, in building that reputation we talked about. That was super important for me because I came in the industry in a way that most people don't. I came in through an actor. Mm -hmm. And um, it can look like I had a little favoritism. And I never wanted people to think, oh, she only works on Be Mary Jane and still. Or she only works when, when her friend is um, is on something, Casting, you know. Yeah. So I had to really build a name for myself to where it didn't matter if being Mary Jane ever came back. It didn't matter if Raven ever worked again. I was still going to have to work. Yeah. Um, so I I had to make my own connections outside of her, um, and my own connections outside of the department head that I was working for at the time because she was based in L. A. So after that was over, she was going back to L. A. <laughs> and you know, essentially, we had to forget all about me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's gonna be like, I need somebody who could be in town, mm -hmm. and if you're moving to yeah. Atlanta or wherever, yeah. she's gonna be like, who? Yep, I had to meet other people, and I started going to like different um, film and TV events around okay. the city because um, Atlanta is big with that. So you just um, Instagram. I, I would always just look up people on there and see what was going on, and any flyer that I saw on my timeline, I was going just so that I could meet other people. Mm -hmm. I had my little business card. I don't even have cards now, but <laughs> then I had my little business card. Like I was really, I was adamant about meeting new people, yeah. and I, I wasn't scared to meet new people. Where can the students follow you at? Like, where can they? Keep in contact with you. Not your number or anything. Oh no! But like, <laughs> like Instagram probably. Um, so I have I have three Instagram pages. <laughs> so Not that many followers that well, they you. Be, I, have, I have a little following. Be like, um, chicks, a yeah, little so, bit. I have a little bit. Um, um, Sierra Pineapple is my main Instagram. That's okay. my, my personal page. Um, but I have linked inside of that bio my food page okay. and my uh, makeup page, which are Pineapple Faces for Makeup and Pineapple Cooks for the Cooking page. Oh my yeah, God. All that's in the bio, including the IMDb. That I told everyone that they should look they at. They better have. Yes, they yes. better have. <laughs> yep. Look that up. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. Thank here. you. Like this coming was on great. the show. Like I'm we haven't. So happy. We haven't had a makeup artist at all. And I'm really? Here, You're like, the first makeup artist? Yes. And I'm like, oh, I don't wow. know what to so ask. I'm like. Well, I know what I think about what, like what I think makeup artists do, but you do way more. Than well, you asked me really great questions. I was able to, you know, answer without 
without getting, you know, lost. I'm so over here like, what? In the, it's different types of makeup. It's certain it's makeup a lot. techniques. It's a lot. That's why I tell people you have to be, if you really want to do this, because I get so many messages about, like, you know, how can I get in the industry? You have to be ready for it. Yeah. You really do. Because yeah. it's not it's not what you think. It's not all glamorous. Yeah. It's not. Well, I am your host, J.L. Benjamin. And, y'all, that is the past show. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> we'll much. We'll catch y'all again next week, y'all. <laughs>